Oh, crisis, uh, you know, perhaps we should start first, uh, you know, on crisis management. I see it, uh, you know, a three um, type of definitions of crisis management. It's, uh, you know, once you are, you know, in a crisis, what is it that you do? How do we also, you know, prepare our, you know, our leaders, you know, to be really adapted, uh, you know, to face, uh, you know, a crisis? Uh, what is more important and more related to my own experience is to have a holistic approach, uh, you know, to the crisis management and to the crisis, uh, you know, itself, uh, always with the view of leaving no one behind. So always, you know, like thinking about the most vulnerable, you know, population that you may not think, you know, at first once you are, you know, in a crisis. And so therefore, you know, to, um, uh, you know, like to involve as many, many, you know, stakeholders. I uh, also, you know, look at the, you know, a gender, uh, you know, diverse also, you know, um, because the, you know, like gender uh, diversity makes you feel also and think also, you know, differently. I'm a woman, but, you know, so also my male colleagues, you know, come with, uh, you know, various, you know, angles on how, you know, they look at the crisis. The second uh, definition I have about crisis management is more about the level of preparedness. So we're looking at, uh, you know, contingency planning. What is it that you do that you really, you know, that you think that you are all prepared? And then maybe like the third approach is um, also, you know, looking at crisis management, but in the future. And that's exactly what we are actually brainstorming right now. Uh, are we really ready? And the whole th aspect of it is always, you know, to ask, you know, the question, you know, to ourselves, are we, um, you know, ready enough to prepare for the unforeseen? So there have been like some very interesting, you know, debates, which add to the complexity of crisis management. Um, is, uh, you know, the unforeseen. And the unforeseen we've been discussing this morning was about artificial, you know, intelligence, which I find extremely, you know, fascinating, uh, especially in the, you know, crisis management I have seen, uh, it was more related to insecurity, uh, rebellion, natural catastrophes. But we, do we really then, you know, think also about artificial intelligence, you know, work settings, you know, at the United Nations or for an international, you know, NGO, such as the one that I have worked for, you know, before, you know, with Médecins Sans Frontières. You see, before, um, and I would go back to my very, very first, uh, you know, crisis. Uh, you know, I was just like fresh from university and, uh, you know, I was thrown, as I would call it like that, you know, like from, uh, you know, my, uh, my organization at that time. Uh, you know, like into, uh, you know, the Rwandese, you know, genocide. So are we really, you know, ever ready to, to you know, to cope with such, uh, a, first of all, you know, human tragedy? So, you know, like at first, uh, you know, you are new to the, you know, to, to the really a crisis, you know, environment. Uh, you, you learn, you know, as you actually, you know, you do it, right? So you constitute yourself, your own portfolio of various, uh, you know, instincts, you know, that you have. But as more as I evolved in, you know, in crisis management, you know, as I also grew a little bit, you know, older, crisis in leadership skills, you know, really is first of all is to more like as a leader is first to uh, to have your own self, you know, awareness. What is it the kind of a skills that you have to develop yourselves in order, you know, to deliver? Uh, during that particular time. So first, like from the self-awareness, you also need then, you know, like to deal with a team. And then I always think that, you know, it is not about the fact of having, you know, a crisis and deal with your team and then, oh yes, but you know, what is your strength and what is your weaknesses? So there's a lot of things on, you know, on prevention and uh, knowing actually the, uh, you know, your team skills and, your, you know, the, the team's, you know, skill set. So that I exactly, you know, know, uh, for example, uh, you know, like whether you can also adopt, you know, a certain leadership styles. In non-crisis, uh, you know, emergencies, you adopt more of a consultative, you know, type of leadership. You consult with people, uh, you know, so you get to know them, but vice versa. They also, you know, know what are actually, you know, my strengths. 
but also you know my weaknesses and um and so that then when something you know arrives like you know like if they see that i'm more like authoritative not saying you know like that in a very like, you know negative term but sometimes in, you know, when you are in a crisis, uh, you know, situation, you have no time for consultative process to, you know, to take place. So you have to take, uh, you know, immediate uh, what from your gut's instincts, uh, you know, what you think, you know, is the best, you know, situation. And so there is a generally a more acceptance from your team members, even if this, the decision you take is not very popular. But then with, uh, you know, some, uh, as I would say, you know, get to know and, you know, the team spirit and the team building, you know, is essentially, you know, very important. So once you have the time and people think that sometimes, you know, like team building is just a waste of time. It is not. It's, it's actually uh, the, the time that you invest in actually, you know, to, to spend it in a, in a more efficient way, you know, in the future. So for the, 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 the skills that you really need to have that is like to really first to work on, you know, the investment, you know, of you vis-a-vis -vis your team, but your team also vis-a-vis -vis yourself um, in order, you know, to better be ready and to understand each other, you know, like better in, you know, in team, uh, you know, spirits uh, in case sometimes, you know, very difficult situations and, sec and difficult, uh, you know, decisions needs to be taken. It's not only about, you know, like dealing with the situation, but it's really, you know, to deal with all the stakeholders. And, uh, you know, and when I also refer, you know, to leaving no one behind, you have indeed, you know, the victim, but behind the victim, there is a whole world also, meaning, you know, their relatives, their friends, their close friends. So, you know, you need to manage, you know, all this. Uh, you know, beyond the individual and the human being, you also have then, you know, the institution. The institution also has its own, you know, organizational, you know, culture. So you've got to, you know, to be able, you know, to understand how your organization, you know, is functioning. The organization can be also highly, you know, political. So any decision that you actually, you know, would take, you know, with your own instinct, somehow also has a political impact. And I think that all this, you know, like uh, it goes back to your first, you know, your questions, what is the leader, you know, of tomorrow? You know, he needs really to be, you know, like not only be self-aware of their own, uh, you know, skills, but also, uh, you know, to be able, you know, to, to, to measure and evaluate the impact of your decision, because your, your decision may turn out, you know, being a, a major, you know, political blast you know, in the end. So um, that's uh, how I translate this as being really, you know, a holistic approach. I think it has to be an institutional approach, uh, you know, a family approach, an individual approach. I think what is very important, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able maybe, you know, like to speak to you about crisis management if I, if I haven't been in, in crisis, you know, before. I lived, you know, when I was very young and, and, and Basically, maybe it's the best time, uh, you know, to do that. Uh, not in my, not in my age, you know, right now. So, you know, as I said, uh, you know, I, I lived through genocide in Rwanda, following which I was uh, in the, the middle of the war, you know, in Bosnia, lived through, was a pure witness of the Srebrenica massacre, was evacuated, I don't know how a number of times, then as a, I would say, you know, as an individual, uh, you know, by, by the United Nations, uh, was also a victim of malicious act. Uh, so I think that somehow myself and crisis management, I've, I also have adopted a certain holistic approach by having lived, uh, you know, on the other side, I would say, you know, of, uh, you know, the desk, either, you know, you are uh, you know, part of this uh, you know, crisis, you know, management team. But I've also have been, uh, in a way, but perhaps unfortunately, uh, you know, a victim, you know, of it too. Uh, but I think that, you know, having then going through all those, you know, this type of experience, uh, you know, allows you really, you know, to, to move on and perhaps to, to have a certain view of what is crisis management because you live through it that maybe, you know, you can actually do your job. So for, to the young people, you know, who would want to do that, I think that, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity, whenever, uh, you know, don't listen to people saying, oh, no, 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 this is too dangerous, you know, just don't go. It has to come from yourself. If you feel that, you know, no, I, you know, I can, I can go, uh, you know, to those, 
uh, you know, crisis, uh, you know, situation that really, you know, builds you up uh, and, and especially gives you, you know, a strong, I would say, uh, you know, tools, uh, you know, to, um, for the future. Mm -hmm.